Hi, this is Debbie from Project 39 Mini Albums. This is part three and the final part on how I made this mini album. There is also a walkthrough and the walkthrough and the other installments of these tutorials will be listed in the description box below. So this is going to show you how to add the ribbon to the pages, adding the library style closure, making these tuck spots with the bunny, adding magnets to the flap. I think I show you how to do it with this one, yep. Um, and making the photo mats. So I walk you through the process of making sort of uh, mixed media photo mats if you'd like to see that. And finally, the last part of this is how I decorated the cover. So stay tuned and I'll show you all of those. I want to take a second to show you how I'm going to put the ribbon. So I don't know if you remember, but I wanted to put ribbon on um, just as sort of a pull tab so you know looking at it to pull. So I'm going to start where that magnet is on the one page and I'm just going to put it right there. I put score tape on it. Now you can use seam binding. I had this in my stash because the seam binding I had was beige, which would have gone, but I had this gray and I thought it was pretty to go with it. So anyhow, I put score tape on the back and I'm just going to have oh, maybe a quarter of an inch showing and put it here and just push it closed. And then when you put the paper on, this page is gonna have that. It just is peeking under the paper and you'll see it and you'll know, oh, that must open. So that's how I put the little ribbon on the pages. All right, I'm gonna show you how to put in the library style pockets that we've made previously. So we have, these are two layers and how do they look? They look fine. You could put a layer of the pattern paper on top if you wanted to. In this case, I'm not because the, the gray looks good. So I'm going to, you can measure to figure out exactly where the center of this is. You keep it closed and then you, where the hole is, you make a dot. I have this go down a little bit. So they're centered and they're equal. All right, now we'll grab a hole punch or a pokey tool, whatever you have. And oops, punch a hole. And if this, if you don't have a long enough tool, then you can use a pin or a pokey tool or just something to start the hole. Okay, so we've got those two. Now I'm going to have the string go through and just have about an inch, inch and a half. Sometimes what I'll do is separate the string Well, this has four strands, but in this case, I'm just going to grab a little bit of score tape and just tape it on there. Um, now we'll take the circles with the holes and your brad and put it through. And spread the legs of the brad. We'll do the same with this. Just put it through, spread the legs of the brad. And something I do that you don't need to, but I just feel like it helps go on to the paper nice and smooth is I add a little bit of score tape to where the brad is. 
and then we'll take off all the score tape backing. And add glue. Especially around here, I'll add some to where the string is. Let me put some glue on here too. Move this out of the way. Put that on the bottom. That will go on the top. And then burnish around it. And there you go. So now you can just tie off the end. I'm going to put, I think I have a charm that I can use. So I'll put that on. And that can just go around like that. And there you go. There's your library style closure. All right. So I want to show you how I did the tuck spot with the bunny. So first of all, I grab some pretty strong packing tape. And I put it on the back over where the bun is. little and then I grabbed my craft knife and just cut around him but you don't want to go all the way to the edge. through the back and then make sure it's all uh, connected so it'll open the packing tape just helps keep it from so it doesn't uh, come apart I'm going to just grab some score tape and put it down at the bottom and on the side because now of course where I put the packing tape the glue is not going to stick and I want this part the bunny part to pop out and the rest to stay down so I'll just put some score tape around it trim some of that packing tape okay I'm gonna peel off the backing of the score tape and 
add some art glitter glue around the rest of it, but again, leave the bunny part alone. And so you can put a photo right there with the bunny holding on to it. And the other way of having a little tuck spot is to fussy cut around a figure. So I fussy cut around this guy. I'm actually going to take a little bit of distress ink and just go around the edges of him. Helps hide any mistakes you've made. And then let's put some score tape on the bottom and on the side so he can be a tuck spot here. So I'm going to put I have score tape on the bottom. I'm going to put it on the side. Burnish it real well. And then just to be sure, I'm going to put a dab of glitter glue on the inside I'm going to have his little feet going a little over the edge and just like that. So now that's got to dry before we use it as a tuck spot, but you get the idea. He, he lifts up a little bit here and then makes a tuck spot for a photograph. So we have these two flaps and I'm going to show you how to put the magnets on. I have not adhered these. I just put it on with um, a little bit of ATG, just, just a little dab of ATG as I'm going through so I know where they go. All right, so I want the magnet to be here on the back side. So I'll take one of the magnets. I'll take the positive one here. And again, you don't want it too close to the edge because you want the paper to cover it. So that'll go there. I'll put the corresponding negative magnet on. Peel off the backing. And just let them touch there. And then we'll go ahead and put on the paper. And it's all done. I've already inked the edges. And it just needs glue. So I'll put this on and center it. We're covering the magnet. Nothing you need to do special because it's got the adhesive on it. And it's going to stay. And then this one is for the uh, back piece. So I'm going to add the glue. Put it on. And there we go. I have to go ahead and put these on and I realize I didn't ink the edge of this one so I'll do that. But anyhow that's how to put the magnet on when you have a corresponding flap. All right let's talk photo mats. So there are hidden photo mats inside the pocket pages and then there needs to be photo mats inside the pages that have the pockets. So the sizes of them are this larger one is going to be five and a half by seven and a half is the uh, the gray paper and then the white paper is five and a quarter by seven and a quarter and the photo mats to go in the pockets are going to be four and a half by six and a half 
and the white inside four and a quarter by six and a quarter. Let me talk to you about different ways of decorating. I advise you to get two paper packs because some of the backside of the paper has this uh, more muted tone, not as much design, and these would be fabulous for your um, for your pockets. I didn't have it when I made the album. I should have ordered an extra one. Um, so I decided to do sort of a mixed media thing. So what it, I did was I used lots of Distress ink, not just on the edges, I distressed it a bunch. And then I used stamps and embossing plates to add some additional texture to it. So we're going to go through and we're going to make some now to show you how I did it. One other option before I do that is instead of doing that, if you want to just paper piece um, using some of your scraps, then you can make, um, you know, put on the white paper in a smaller size. I cut this one down for the size of the photo and really you could put put photo here stamp. This is four by six and this is five by seven. So you could put either of those size photos on here. Five by seven actually is a little bit big. I put that one in this back pocket. And as you can see, it's a little big. Um, so let's go ahead and I will show you how we make this mixed media kind of thing. Um, you'll need a couple of distress inks. I have distress ink in weathered wood, which goes really nice with the collection. And I have walnut stain. And there was another one that I used. It wasn't vintage photo. Oh yeah, it was vintage photo. So, um, and I used a little bit of this antique linen. Also what you'll need is, so I use some embossing plates to put the texture down. I have this one with a, not a floor de lis, I don't know what pattern you'd call that. And then I had one that had music patterns, you know, just mix and match whatever you have. I didn't have anything with this diamond pattern and that was prominent in some of the pages. So I made my own and I made it using fun foam that I put score tape on the back and just cut it and adhered it to this piece of chipboard. So you can make your own simple stamps like that. I also had some stamps in different collections. So this one sort of was fleur de lis pattern. You could use any of those. I had this random flower print. Um, I'm trying to see if I could find it on one of the papers. But see this one, this pattern is similar. Oh, let me open this up. And I've just had these in my collection. So this, similar. I mean, not exactly the same, but similar. And then I had this leaf pattern. So just grab whatever you have that's got a similar feel to it and just play and have fun. If you don't like what you did, you turn it over and you do it on the other side. So first I'm going to start by inking the edge and I'm using this weathered wood. It's sort of a blue gray uh, color. And you can um, round the corners of the paper. So when it's a smaller photo, I don't, because I don't want to put the photo on and have the corner. I don't know. I just don't like the look of it. If it's a small photo, I don't round the corners. I just like the straight border all around the photo. It's entirely up to you how you want to do it. I'm just going to do a couple of these inking the edges with this 
weathered wood. I'm pretty messy when it comes to this. And then I might want to just lightly add a little bit of color. You have to be careful with these round ones because it might uh, leave a round impression like I did there. Um, I also have these, which you could use, and I'll take some in the walnut stain. You know, some areas I'll do darker than others. Okay, so that's that's it for that for this moment. Now let's take. I'm going to take this. This part has the raised music notes. Nope, I don't want this blue. I want walnut stain. I'm not putting it on very heavy. I'm not getting a really big coat of ink. If you do, you want to stamp it off somewhere and then put it on. I'm putting it over the edge because I don't want the edge to show. I'm just pushing down a little bit. I guess I needed more ink than I did. But that's the kind of mixed media. You try it, you don't like it, do it again. So you see it's a very faint. The music notes are very faint. Not a lot. I'm going to take it. I know I already have some ink on it. Oops. It slid, but you know what? That's okay. So we added more. It just adds a little bit of texture. I'll go ahead and take this. Reminds me of wallpaper. So I'll take this wallpaper pattern. I'm going to ink it with this, the weathered wood gray. And then I'm going to put some again on the corner. See, that came out a little heavier than I would have wanted, but that's okay. Um, and then let's take some stamps. So now I have some Distress Oxide in Antique Linen, and I'm going to put that on this stamp using this makeup brush. And I'm going to take corner of this stamp and add a touch of the walnut stain. And then I'm going to lightly we'll go on the corner this way. Very lightly push down. Do it again to get a second version. And a third. And let's, well, actually, that's it for that one. I'll just try to use up all the ink. There we go. So that's it for that one. I'm going to put this on to that. And that's going to be done. And this one will look nice like that. So it just adds a very faint background to it. See, here is the background from the paper. Not exactly the same, but not too far off either. Uh, we'll do one more set, and then you go play. 
So the one thing I've been doing consistently with these is taking the weather wood and inking the edges. And I've done that throughout the whole book and that helps. Number one, it hides the white edge of the paper. Not that that's a big deal. If you use black, then it's more of a deal than using this, the gray artisan cardstock. Uh, but it helps unify everything. All right, so we'll just dirty up the paper as my friend calls it. Took some of this walnut stain. You could also use a toothbrush and do droplets of water. All right, we're gonna take this. So again, I took some fun foam. I put some score tape on the back. I took an exacto and just cut lines and then cut lines the other way and made the diamond pattern. Just going to lightly take some of this antique linen distress oxide and then I'll go for my vintage photo. And again, I'm going to use the side of this. And then we'll, it's going to come out pretty heavy, but that's okay. I won't push too hard. You can see a light harlequin print, I guess it is. There we go. And then um, all right, I'm taking this little stencil and I'll ink it up, but I want to take off some of the ink because that's going to be too much. So I'll go on the back side here. See, that would be too dark. But now that I've done it once, see, it got consecutively lighter. Now, if you like that darker one, go ahead and go for it. And there we go. That's it. That's all I'm going to do with those. And then I'll put those on to here. And then you can put a photo, and most of this is going to get hidden, but at least it's going to uh, go along with the flow of the, um, the rest of the album. It won't stick out. It won't be too bright white and stick out like a sore thumb. So again, if you can, get two packs of paper, but if not, improvise. All right, so now I'm going to decorate the covers. I already put the paper on. I inked around the edges pretty heavily. What I want to do is have a frame and have some fussy cut elements on the sides, um, maybe a butterfly, and I'll have some Prima flowers. Now, I don't have a frame to match the collection, so I'm taking uh, a frame from my stash, and I'm just going to adhere some paper being very, very generous with the uh, art glitter glue. And I'm going to use this piece. I'm just going to lay it down on here, grab my bone folder or this implement.
I know, I shouldn't have used those fussy cut flowers, but you know what, I have so many of them that it was not a big deal. Now I'm going to take, you should let it dry first, but when it's dry, take an X-Acto and just go around the edges. I'm going to do the corners in a bit, but I'm going to do the edges first and cut straight down. Don't do it at a bevel where some of the original frame may show. So just try to go in a straight up and down motion. All right, now that I got that, I'm going to do the corners very slowly and I'll do the inside of the frame. Now, once it's dry, if it's not as perfect as you want, grab a file, and just file the areas that are not, for instance here it's not that round, so I'll just file to round off the edges. And I'm going to take a little bit of Distress Ink and distress the edges. This is going to be, this part is not as straight as I want, so this is going to be the corner, and most of that is going to be hidden with flowers or whatever I choose. And again, the Distress Ink is the weathered wood from Tim Holtz, but you can go with, with whatever colors you want. And I've had this in my stash. I thought gray would be great, but then I get it and I realize it's really a blue. But this is perfect for this because of the blue-green tones that are in the foliage. All right, now I'm getting the edge of this. And that is perfect. All right, I'm going to pop this up so you can slip a picture in it. So I'll turn it over and this is the top facing me, so I'll leave that open so you can slip a picture in. And I'm using uh, dimensional tape. It's not, I'm just going to use one layer. If you really want it popped up, you can stack one layer on top of another. But for this case, I don't want it, I don't like my album covers too chunky because I don't want anything to fall off of it if you keep it on a bookshelf or on your coffee table. All right, now that that's on, I'm going to take off the backing. And I'm going to center it 
make sure the top is the top. So I'll center it. Uh, about an inch and a half down from the top. So you can see you can use any frame you have in your stash. Just cover it. Um, and it's nice where, you know, I use this plain paper so the busy pattern stops at the paper. So what I have as far as fussy cutting are some of the elements from this page. Now you could absolutely put this bunny on the cover and that would be adorable but again i wanted to stay away from the the bunny um i want it to be dimensional but i don't want it all to be dimensional and i have this one for over here which is cut from the same paper now that can stick on there this can go down there just so it's got some of the small elements because this is a larger element and i just wanted to tie it together and then i have two butterflies cut out that are the same size and actually what i'm going to do is stack them on top of each other so it's sort of that decoupage layered effect and the first one will be glued down the second one will be layered a little bit and actually I do want that up like that because then I have these flowers. So these are Prima flowers. Uh, they're called, they're diamond. And they're more green than blue. So I took my distress ink and inked up two of them, a darker and a lighter, just so it'll blend in. And then I've just got one of the green because that's okay. And I'm going to put those something like that. So I'm going to come back and show you what I've made. And that was the final episode of the three part tutorial on how I made this mini album. Please go ahead and hit the like button if you enjoyed this tutorial and got a lot out of it. Put anything in the comment section if you'd like more clarification or if there's something else you'd like to see. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. Once again, thank you for watching. Have a fabulous day.